is a small video for cast ons and cast offs. Okay, so we've put the manual down because it's actually making me a little angry. One of the things that I've noticed that the uh, manual does not show you is how to cast on and how to actually cast off. It appears to me that the KH-230 was designed for people who already know what they're doing. What if you don't know what you're doing? How are you supposed to know how to cast on and cast off using the traditional methods? So I'm going to take a few minutes in this video to show you my go-to cast ons and of course my go-to cast offs. So let's get started. Let's bring forward 20 needles, 10 on either side of zero. We are going to take our base yarn. I'm going to put a clip on one end. I'm going to let it dangle. And we're going to do what is called an E-wrap. So we're just going to wrap the yarn around the needles. That is how hard an E-wrap is. Are there other ways to do E-wrap? Yes, there's another way to do an E-wrap, but it involves waste yarn. So first we're going to do the basic E-wrap. Okay, we are now E-wrapped goes into the carriage, set the carriage to six. You're in plain, plain knitting, nothing special, knit across one rope. Now you can hang your cast on comb. Hang on, I just had my manual fall down. Move the carriage out of the way. Grab the yarn tail. Put the cast on comb on top. Put on your weights. Try and make sure that your uh, loop here is actually right against there. I'm going to free it up here. One second. So to free it up, I just move my cast on comb up. And I just free that yarn tail. Okay. No reason to panic. No, no reason to, to cry. It's free. It's good. It's golden. Now we knit across. Make sure you pull up any slack. And you're knitting. And that's how easy it is to get knitting on the KH-230. Now, the alternate way of doing the E-wrap. We're going to change yarn colors. We are still going to grab a contrast here. Okay, so we have our contrast yarn. We're still clipping it. Throwing it down between the beds. With the waste yarn on the machine, move your stitches up. Now, lay your... Okay, I said that wrong. Go in between the first and second needle and lay the yarn over the stitch opposite direction of where the carriage is. Okay, so now we are going away from the carriage, but working our way towards the carriage. Still is an E-wrap, but we're going clockwise towards the carriage, away from the carriage, working our way towards the carriage. 
and we're pulling it through. So we are directing how much tension is on the yarn instead of leaving it up to fate. You can pull those loops back as far as you feel you need to for security, but I wouldn't do it much further than having the latch at the bow tie. Okay? I hope that makes sense. I hope my wrist isn't in the way of you being able to see. So I just barely move it back, put the yarn in, in the holder, and then I take my hands and I just move the stitches forward. Okay, they're all locked in. Now I knit across. And to me, that's pretty good. When I go to remove the waste yarn, I just clip the contrast yarn and then pull the yarn tail. Pretty easy. Is there another method of casting on? Yes. There is a double E wrap. So let's do a double E wrap in pink. Oh, hang on. My poor yarn is not having a good day. Okay. Every time I pull out the pink yarn, the green yarn gets released. Okay. So a double E wrap is the method of going loop through loop and um, locking it in as well. So what we start with is everyone comes forward through the second and the first, wrap it around the first, come back up Hang on. Come back up and it'll go around the second one, but go into the needle of the first one and then pull it through. So we have a loop gone up forward and back. Through, forward, The double E wrap is probably one of the most used you will see on my channels. After I use the double E wrap, I can actually put the cast on comb teeth into each of the loops that are formed. So that's double E wrap. And for the last one, we just pull it through into the mast, I mean, into the sinker plate, and we knit across. Nice, locked in, and neat. Is there another cast on? Yes. The last cast on, and it's probably one of the earliest ones that you will learn, is called a latch tool cast on. We're going to pretend that I don't have any other yarn on the machine. So we're just going to pretend that, that this is all clear. For the latch tool cast on, we make a loop. Put your latch tool in that loop and of course you're going to need a clip okay so we go in between the needles and we are doing a crochet cast on over the needles in our working um, thread do i use this cast on I use this cast on only 
for one project. And that is a slipper. The slipper is probably one of the easiest projects to start with. Goes into the sinker plate. Put down your tool so you don't stab yourself. Move your stitches back. Now knit across. Oh, as you can see, I was not in my sinker plate again. So we probably are going to lose some of this. Okay, we only lost one stitch. In the grand scheme, that's not bad. So we're just going to save it, lift it, and move on. Okay, so that's the crochet cast on with a little mistake. Not a big deal. Um, I guess we should move right into cast offs. The first cast off that you learn is a latch tool cast off. So we're going to go tension 10. Knit across. Just like we did for the crochet cast on the latch tool cast off. You are simply grabbing the, the loop, removing it from the needle, putting it behind the latch, and you are pulling it through. One, two, three. Now for this last one, it's a little hard, so I'm just gonna move the needle, and that's four. And then we just hang it on the next hook. Um, that is a way that you can do armhole decreases if you wish. I find it's too tight and it warps my projects. I prefer to do a gate peg bind off, which I think I did show you earlier, but I will show you again. I remove it from the machine, knit through, move it behind the gate peg, Bring it forward, knit it through, go behind the gate peg, bring it forward, knit it through. Is this the proper gate peg? No, it's not. If you want to see a proper gate peg in uh, good lighting and well explained, I believe Diana Sullivan has it in her videos. And yeah, they're the best. Um, I will do a couple more of these and then we can do backstitch. Okay, so that is the latch the last of the um, special ones. I'm now just going to knit this through and then we will do a couple back stitch. For back stitch, you need a double eye or tapestry needle. So let me get my double eye. Okay, so using a double eye, we just take our yarn end, bring these forward, and then we go in behind and through, and then through the forward. I don't know if I said that right, but you just go back and forth through the needle loops, needle loops, yarn loops, creating a stitch which locks them in 
and keeps the most amount of spring in your stitch. The only time that I use back stitch is on children's wear and blankets where I need the project to stretch and stay springy, such as trying to get um, the um, neckband over a child's head. Now for this one, I have two loops on the same stitch. So I make sure I go through both loops in behind and through. And then to end it, I go into those again and I just pull it through. And that is how I cast that off. Wow, so much noise. All right. Now we're just going to lift this up and remove the weights. Okay, so we have our waist yarn and we have our E wraps. There's our E-wrap, there's our second E-wrap, and now I'm going to release it. Now you can see the initial E-wrap, nice and neat. The second E-wrap, still nice and neat, let's release it. So I'm going to actually cut my contrast. And I'm going to pull this yarn tail oh, because we had a little accident there. One second. I'm going to undo it a little bit. That is now released. Now you can see that second E-wrap, nice and neat. We're now going to do a repeat on this side where we're going to show you the other cast on. Gently cut, released, that one is now gone. Now you can see that double E-wrap makes a uniquely finished edge, which still has the E-wrap edge, but it's got a nice crochet. And now we'll, we will repeat trimming it. Now we still have that little issue here, so we'll probably lose, maybe not. No, that's all locked in. We're good. Okay. Give it a pull. It's released. And there's your crochet cast on. Again, nice and neat. Um, as for your finishes, here is your latch tool, back stitch, and this is gate peg. Well, lazy gate peg. So there you go, a supplemental video on how to cast on and cast off in the simplest ways. Up next is a tension swatch.